Hello friends. There is a concept in population biology that we should always have in mind when we want to rear animals. It's the concept of carrying capacity. The carrying capacity of a habitat is the number of individuals that can be sustained by the physical, chemical and biological resources that habitat has, like the amount of light and dissolved oxygen, without breaking its equilibrium. In a closed system, like an aquarium, when we have more individuals than the carrying capacity of that aquarium, invariably that habitat and individuals will die. To avoid a disaster, we have three options. Reduce the number of individuals, increase the size of the habitat, or increase its efficiency. In this video, we'll see how we can increase the efficiency of absorption of oxygen in the water of an aquarium or pool all the methods and tools we have at hand. If you want to see more videos on how to minimize the maintenance of an aquarium, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell if you want to be notified about new videos. As we saw in the intro to this series, in an aquarium we have a variety of processes and living beings that need oxygen. Although some don't breathe in the water and others demand different amounts of dissolved oxygen, we must always strive for the highest level of oxygen in the water, hopefully near saturation. Before we dive into the matter, let's see how oxygen gets dissolved in water and which are its dynamics. There are two ways how free oxygen gets into the water in a closed system. First, we have photosynthesis, which transforms carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and energy. And second, we have the absorption of oxygen at the water atmosphere. So, in principle, to increase the levels of oxygen, we can increase the photosynthesis and the size of the contact surface between water and atmosphere. However, we must consider other factors that affect the amount of oxygen in the water. What boosts or restricts the surface absorption of oxygen? We have the temperature, the turbulence of the water, the salinity, the altitude with regard to the sea level, the atmospheric pressure, the higher concentration of oxygen in the air or in the water, that's Henry's law, and the amount of oxygen that is consumed in the water regularly. What boosts or restricts photosynthesis? The amount of nutrients and carbon dioxide, the amount of light, the amount of submerged plants, the transparency of the water, and the alkalinity. Oxygen depleting processes. The size of the population. The take up of oxygen by plants and animals. The amount of decomposing matter. That means the oxygen take up by aerobic bacteria. Considering these factors, we can boost the amount of oxygen in the water in the following ways. First of all, the management of our aquarium. Keeping the temperature at the lowest level possible increasing the flow and turbulence of the water, removing most sedimented or floating organic matter, keeping the animal population low and optimizing photosynthesis within the aquarium's carrying capacity. Regarding the temperatures, my recommendation is quite simple. If we must warm the water, we should regulate it near the lowest temperature the most sensitive creature requires. That is, if we have two fish, and one tolerates 10 to 30 degrees Celsius, while the other tolerates 15 to 30 degrees Celsius, we must leave the thermostat at 15 or 16 degrees Celsius, not at 30 degrees Celsius. Water flow and turbulence are concerned with achieving the largest surface of water getting in contact with the air. To achieve this, we must break up the water to its smallest particles, its smallest volumes. Here we have several possible tools. Waterfalls. Although in Chile we have a waterfall that falls upwards, the Cascada Invertida, we should make our waterfall fall downwards. So we take the water as high up as we can with a pump and let it fall. In these images we have some examples. Highest oxygen transfer will come with the highest fall the more obstacles it finds, 
fragmenting the film of water thanks to holes, slots and ridges and the higher flow. If we increase the capacity of the pump, we can take the waterfall higher and produce more gallons per minute. In this way, the more depleted areas of an aquarium have a better chance of recovering. When we increase the flow, we must make sure the outlet has the proper size. A thinner film of water. When we make the water flow over a larger surface, the film gets thinner and can absorb more oxygen. Cleaner air. This means absence of humidity, smoke, and contaminants, and renovating it frequently. Contaminated air contains less oxygen and can transfer unwanted elements to the water. Adding a venturi to the pump outlet ejects air and fragments the water. Another way to fragment the water and increase the contact surface is with paddle wheels. However, paddle wheels are very inefficient when the surface water is near oxygen saturation, thanks to photosynthesis, and can cause a loss of oxygen diffusing it into the air. Another method is pumping air with air pumps and air stones. However, the air in the bubbles provides very little oxygen to the water. Its best contribution is moving the water around and fragmenting it. And this is what increases the absorption of oxygen. So, it's more efficient to use the air pumps to move the water over the water atmosphere interface, and especially the water from the bottom of the water column, which tends to stagnate more easily. For this, we can use aspirators, like this one, which pull the water up with the help of bubbles from bottom to surface, especially during the photosynthetic period. In any case, we must consider that all these tools can contribute to the loss of water by evaporation and splashing. Remove sediments and suspended matter. Another way of increasing oxygen is frequently cleaning the water to avoid the accumulation of decaying matter. Siphoning the bottom of the aquarium. If we have sediments settling at the bottom, in corners or under stones, anoxic regions can build up, something that can bring other problems like an increase of ammonia. Clean the piping. When you have water flowing through pumps and pipes, debris can be caught inside these and cause a buildup that can clog these pipes. This reduces the flow and efficiency of oxygen absorption. Don't overpopulate aquarium. Here we return to the concept of carrying capacity. All plants need a minimum space to grow healthy, thanks to the number of resources that space can provide. The quantity of nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and space can be limiting and must be considered when designing your habitat. When done on land, we establish a number of plants per square meter and provide fertilizer for that amount of land. In hydroponics, we do something very similar. In aquaponics, we separate the fish from the plants in different connected spaces. But in an aquarium, plants, fish and others must share the same space. And it's practically impossible to establish with certainty how many plants, fish and other living beings can be reared because there are too many variables involved. Most formulations given by some amateurs, inches by gallons, square inches by gallons, or even weight by gallons, are rubbish. The only thing one can say with certainty, and in a few words, is that less will always be more. A moderate amount of plants and animals will give us space to grow and works as a buffer to control any disruption. An excess of fish creates an oxygen demand higher than what an aquarium can support, and an excess of plants can create deadly conditions. Finally, let's examine photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the most important mechanism for supplying oxygen to the water, because 100% of what the plants produce is oxygen, while surface absorption only provides 20% of oxygen. In an aquarium, the oxygen produced through photosynthesis can come from two sources, phytoplankton and submerged plants. As floating and emerged plants produce most oxygen on their leaves, these don't contribute to the dissolved oxygen. 
How can we make photosynthesis more efficient? The efficiency of photosynthesis depends on the available light, carbon dioxide, nutrients, temperature and alkalinity. So, if we optimize these factors for plants, we achieve more photosynthesis and more oxygen. Regretfully, with more photosynthesis, the plants grow more and they can exceed the carrying capacity of the aquarium, both for plants and animals. To avoid this, we must trim or remove the plants to preserve a stable state and a balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide. Additionally, it is practically impossible to know what kind of nutrition an aquarium needs. If we can't even quantify the real biomass of plants and fish and how they vary in time. What we do know is that plants require given proportions of nutrients in the water and what falls out of these proportions becomes a deficiency or a waste and it becomes toxic when it accumulates. These proportions can vary among plant species and at different stages of development but overall are something like this. In most cases the stability of an aquarium is found by trial and error, starting at a level of minimum requirements. As long as our system keeps stable for some time, we can slowly increase demands, and if we see any negativities, we can move back. To understand what each change means, and have data to quantify those changes forward and back, we must measure the water parameters daily, weekly, or monthly, as needed and keep records of this information. For example, if alkalinity is too low, phosphates, which are essential for plant growth, might become unavailable for the plants. So, in summary, we can increase the levels of dissolved oxygen, leaving the heater at the lowest temperature, and we can even save money. Increasing turbulence using tools that fragment the water. Cleaning the water and filters frequently. Establishing submerged plants controlling parameters and fine-tuning within the carrying capacity limits. And never put more plants, fish, shrimp and turtles that the system can support. Well, I hope you liked this video and if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye bye.